In this video, we're going to go over the chat agent executor that we've added to LangGraph. So the chat agent executor is basically an agent executor that works solely on a list of input messages and then basically adds messages to that list to, to keep track of the agent state over time. This is useful and interesting because a lot of the newer models are chat-based models that represent function calling and function responses as messages. And so we can just append it to this list of messages and keep track of it that way. Compared to the other video on using LangChain agents, this will actually use less LangChain concepts. So it will just use the OpenAI model. Um, it can use any model that supports function calling, but we'll use the OpenAI model for this, for this video. And it will use tools from LangChain, but it won't use the, the LangChain agent abstractions. It will, it will be more kind of like bare bones. So let's take a look at setting it up. We're going to require LangChain package. We're going to require LangChain OpenAI package to use the OpenAI model. And we're going to require Tavili package, um, which will be the search tool that we'll use. We'll set the API keys for that. And then we'll also set up uh, LangChain uh, tracing from LangSmith. So this isn't required, but this is a really good way to observe what's going on under the hood with your agents. So first we're gonna set up the tools. Uh, we can do that pretty easily. We're gonna be using Tavili search here. And then we're just gonna set up the tool executor, which is a helper method to basically invoke these tools. After that, we're gonna set up the model. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna import the chat OpenAI model from the lane chain integration. Um, we're gonna initialize it. We're gonna set streaming equals to true, and we'll see why this is important later on, but basically we can stream back tokens this way. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to basically attach the functions that we want the model to have the ability to call to this object. Um, so we can call this format tool to OpenAI function method, which takes in the lane chain tools and converts it to the format that the OpenAI functions calling expects. Once we do that, we can define the agent state. So the agent state is the thing that is passed around and all nodes in the graph will basically update this state over time. So here the state's really simple. It's just gonna require, it's just gonna be a dictionary and there's gonna be one key in it. It's gonna be this list of messages. This list of messages we want to append to over time. So there's two different ways that you can update the state of, of you can update the state over time. You can either overwrite the individual attributes or you can add to it. Here we want to add to it. So we're gonna use annotated and then this operator.add to note that any updates from nodes to this messages thing are going to add to it over time. And this is nice so we just so we can just return only the new messages and not have to worry about returning the old messages plus the new messages. After this, we're gonna define the nodes and the edges. So the nodes are things that do work and then edges are basically things that connect them. So we're gonna want a few things here. We're gonna want an agent node that basically calls the language model and, uh, and, and gets back a response. And then we're gonna want an action node which will take the, the, the response or the list of messages, see if there's any tools that should be called, call those tools and then append them to the list of messages. We're also gonna need a way to determine whether we want to go from the agent to the tool calling thing or to finish. So remember, the agent doesn't always have to call a tool. When it's, fin when it's called as many tools as it wants to and it wants to finish, it can just return directly. And so we need to have a function that determines which of those paths to go down. And that's called a conditional edge. We'll see that later on. So here, we'll first define this function that determines which branch to go down. It's gonna look at the, at the current list of messages. If there's a function call in the last uh, message, then we're uh, going to, or sorry, if there's not a function call in the last message, then we're gonna end. If there is a function call, then we're gonna continue. And so we'll use this to create that conditional edge later on. Then we have this function that calls the model. Here we just get the messages, pass it into the model, and then append that response. This response will be a single message and we'll use a list here because this is getting added to the current messages value. So we need it to be something that can be added with a list. And then finally, we'll have this call tool node. And this will take in the messages. It will get the last message. It will create this tool invocation, um, which basically just has the tool and then the tool input. And we'll, we'll load those from the function calling that's returned from OpenAI function calling. We will then call the tool executor with this, uh, with this tool invocation. Uh, we'll create a function message. And then we'll append this function message to the list of messages by returning this function message as its own list. Once that's done, we can now define the graph. So we create a graph by passing in the agent state we defined above. 
We then create two nodes, the agent node and the action node. We then set the entry point to be the agent node. And so this is basically saying, as soon as the input gets in, the first node that we're gonna send it to is the agent node. We're then gonna add a conditional edge after the agent is called. So after the agent is called, we either want to go to the action node or we want to finish. And we wanna do that based on the logic that's up here in the should continue function. So we're gonna add conditional edges from the agent node. It's gonna use should continue as the function. And then basically we're gonna pass in a mapping from string to some other node name. So continue and end, these are the two values that are returned from the should continue function. And basically if continue is called, then we're gonna to go to the action node that we defined above. If end is called, then we're gonna to go to this end node. And this is a special node that denotes the end of uh, agent. Now we can add an edge from the action node to the agent node, and we're gonna do this because we always want to go to the agent node after we call an action, and then we can compile this graph into something that we can use, uh, like a lane chain runnable. And so we'll expose a lot of similar interfaces as lane chain runnables do, and we'll, we'll use these below. So in order to use it, we need to create our input. Our input's gonna be a dictionary. It's gonna have a messages key, and that messages key is just gonna be a list of messages. Here I just have one human message, but I could easily add a system message, um, a system message, a human message, an AI message, and then another human message, anything there. So I, can, I have full control over the list of inputs. It's just a list of messages. Once I call it, I need to run the above cell. Once I call it, um, it will take a little bit because it's doing a bunch of calls under the hood, um, but it will eventually return an answer and it will return uh, an updated thing with this messages and this messages will be the list it has in the human message that we passed in uh, and then uh, uh, the AI message which is the first call that it made a function message which is the result and then an AI message which is the final result if we want to see what's going on under the hood one way that we can do that is with Langsmith so we can go in here and we can see that there's a few things that are happening under the hood first we're calling OpenAI the inputs this list of messages, which is just this human message, it gets back this function call thing. Um, we then call this, uh, we then go to the action node and we call to Vili search. And so we get back this list of results. And then we have another call to the agent where we have this list of messages as input and we have this output. So this shows what's going on under the hood. As you may have noticed, it took a little bit to get this. And so one of the things that's really nice about LangGraph is it also has a few different streaming capabilities. And that's what we'll cover in the next video.